We're gonna go from this to this by using sliders in After Effects to make a super sick camera shake effect. So let's get into it. So we have this footage of this really cool guy dancing, but there's one problem with it, I think, is that we have this really steady camera. This is like it was filmed on a tripod or something, and I feel like it's not um, accentuating that really cool dance that this guy is doing. So what I wanna do here is kind of add some shaky camera action going on. And you might think they need to add a camera in After Effects, but you would be wrong. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a new adjustment layer by right-clicking, new adjustment layer. And let's go ahead and add a transform effect. So I'm just gonna search for transform, or you can search in your effects and presets panel. And now what this is gonna do is this adjustment layer with transform. Now, anything below this adjustment layer is gonna get affected here. So we can scale, we can rotate, and we can move around the position, etc. Anything below this will have the effects applied. Let me go ahead and rename this transform little housekeeping. So now to just basically get this shaky camera effect, what I can do is I can add a little wiggle expression by alt clicking on the position, type in wiggle with these open parentheses and now the two numbers, let's say two times a second, comma, we want this to wiggle 50 pixels on the position. And then we'll get something like this, okay? So, this is a start, right? Now these edges are a problem, obviously. One thing we could do is we could just scale it up so you don't see them, but um, that's just kind of a hack workaround that'll work. I think what I wanna do is that maybe I'll just extend these edges. So if I add a reptile, now I can just extend all of these edges out a couple hundred pixels like this, and then I switch it to unfold so that it's going to have a more seamless edge. If you look really closely, it's um, it's kind of this kaleidoscope effect, but for what's going on right here, it's, it's not really that much of a problem. It's gonna work. So now, maybe we wanna take this um, wiggle. If we click E, double click E, it's gonna bring up our expressions. And maybe we wanna copy this, and we can also put it on the rotation on this transform. So I can copy this expression, paste it on the rotation. Now this is obviously too crazy. So what we could do here is maybe see if something like half this works, right? So 25, okay. Still too crazy, but we're getting somewhere. So if we wanna start doing this on a bunch of layers, I think what I wanna do is I wanna set up a control layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new null object. And on this null object, I'm gonna add two slider controls. Create one, duplicate it with control or command D, and let's rename this. The first one is going to be frequency, and the next one will be amplitude. And I'm just clicking enter to rename these amplitude. Okay, and let's name this layer control. Great. So now we can go ahead and lock this control layer up here by clicking the little lock icon and let's open up our transform layer. So now these sliders are going to correspond with this wiggle expression, these numbers. This first number, if you highlight this, this two, we can pick whip to the frequency because this is this two is the amount of times per second it wiggles, the frequency. Pick whip that number to that. This 50, you grab just the 50 and pick whip it to the amplitude. That is the amount of pixels that it's going to wiggle. Okay, and then if you get this little error, it's because you need to add a closing parentheses to this expression. Okay, so now what we can do is if we type our numbers back in, this was two times per second and 50 on the amplitude, we're gonna have this nice, wiggle going on, we can copy this expression and we can paste it onto other properties like the rotation. Now this is also getting affected by this slider control. But 
I think that we decided that this um, 50 on the rotation was a little bit too much. So now what we can do is we can add a little bit of math or whatever you want to call it to this expression to have it automatically do the work for us. So why don't we go in and find where this um, amplitude was happening on the rotation, which is right here. And why don't we just add a little bit, uh, a little divided by two to it. So now this will be just dividing this number by two on the rotation. And there we go, that's pretty cool. It's still a little aggressive, but it's a cool guy dance. What can you do? Now we can copy this expression too, and why don't we add it to the scale? So now we have this same expression happening on the scale. Pretty cool, pretty crazy, pretty cool. And I think, you know, we're getting these, some edges popping out here, but you can just extend the repetile a bit more. You know, I think what I also want to do is I want to keyframe this so that it kind of happens when this guy lands this first jump so that there's no camera shaking happening during this first little bit until he kind of lands into this big impact right here. So what I could do is, I could keyframe this, right? This amplitude here, add a keyframe, and maybe it's like zero right here, or an, or maybe a little bit, a number like three, and then right when he lands right here, it blasts up to 50. So we're gonna get something like this, boom, and then it really blasts into the shakiness and gives it a really nice impact that kind of goes with his jump, boom, something like that. It's pretty cool. And then alternately when he ends his uh, whole cool dance, when he kind of spins out into position, we can reverse it. So it slows down back to like three. I, I don't, I don't want to go to zero because there's gonna be no movement. So something like that, it feels a little more natural. Boom, Sp spirals, boom, he spins out and the camera stops. Pretty cool. And you know, this technique, you can use it with any kind of property or anything that can be keyframed. So we could add like a, a radial blur to this. So why don't I go ahead and add a radial blur to this transform layer, right? And maybe I'll change the amount to straight zoom. And I could just paste the expression onto this amount right here. So if I just control V, I still have the expression copied. And now I have this um, amount cranking up that's going along with everything else on these sliders. Whenever anything else is wiggling, so is this blur. And it's got this really nice cohesive look to it. And you know, I could go in and play with these numbers with this on this expression. So maybe I don't want this to be divided by two. Maybe I want this blur to be really crazy. I'll delete that, make sure my expression is closed out. And now I have the blur that's going on really aggressive, but maybe that's how I like it. And I'll just go ahead and, you know, extend this repetile out all the way so we're not getting any edges anywhere. And there we go. So if you set up a system like this, it's a really easy way to just start linking a bunch of properties that really can give your video or your animation an extra oomph of energy when you want it and can really take a cool guy dance to a super cool guy dance. All right, so let me know if you think that this technique made this dance cooler or if you're gonna use it to make your own dances look cooler, let me know. And if there's anything else you wanna see, drop a comment, let me know, all right? That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.